Hi, my name is Steve Chapman and welcome to another photography adventure. In this video, we're going to look at the difference between JPEG and RAW file format. We're also going to be using our cheat sheet, which is called What is the difference between JPEG and RAW format? And it's going to help guide us along the way. Now, I like to look at JPEG and RAW format like a chef looks at food. Let's say, for instance, we're going to look at a pie. Now, a JPEG is like a garage shop bought pie. What you get is what you get. You can't really do much around with it you either gonna like it or you don't like it. And if you don't like it, you can't adjust the flavors. Well, that's just like JPEG. You get it out of your camera, you can tweak it a little bit in Lightroom or Photoshop, but you can't really do much to that uh, file. And that's just what JPEG is. Where if you look at a raw format, well, that's like being a chef and that's looking for the most freshest ingredients, using the best appliances and equipment to prepare your food and savoring your palate so you can enhance the flavors and get really sophisticated palettes and enhance the flavors to the perfect recipe and that is like raw format now as you become a photographer you go from jpeg to raw so you start learning your camera you shoot in jpeg and you're really happy with the results but as you get better you want to get more from your camera and one of the ways you can do that is by shooting in raw format and then you're in the world of true photography in my opinion where you can control the shot you can control the color grading the blacks the whites the highlights in the images you can fix the distortion in your lens and make the image truer so as a photographer going towards the raw format is definitely the way to go so why don't we have a look at the difference between JPEG and RAW. So let's start off with RAW right now. So one of the good things about RAW, as I just said, is that it has full information in the file, so you have full control when you take it into Lightroom. Now, the other good thing about shooting in RAW is that the file sizes are usually larger, which means you can produce a bigger print. So if you want to get your work to a larger scale, then shooting in RAW is definitely the way to go. One of the downsides in shooting in RAW is that you usually need to use specialist software and your skill level needs to be much higher than if you're going to shoot in JPEG. So that is something to be aware of. Okay, so let's have a look at JPEG. Well, the good thing about JPEG is it's easy to use. What you get out of the camera is what you get and you can't really do much more about that in Lightroom or Photoshop. So it's definitely much easier and it's definitely favored for the beginner photographer. Secondly, the file sizes are much smaller, so it means it's easier to share your files with family and friends. And thirdly, because it's a JPEG, then you can upload to Instagram and social media straight away. You can just download it to your camera, and transfer it over to your phone, and straight away you can upload your photos. Where if you shoot in RAW, you need to save them down into JPEG after you post-process them to get your perfect images then put onto social media. That's the overview, so why don't we go out now and take some photos in raw format. I can show you what we can do in post-processing, just to maybe inspire you or get you to think that maybe shooting raw is the next step. Ooh, ooh. 